Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, March 28th, 527 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets are mixed this morning. May corn futures up three quarters of a cent at 427 and a half. May soybeans down four at 1188 and a half. May Chicago wheat up one at 548 and a half. May Kansas City wheat up one and a quarter at 579 and a half. Last trade. May spring wheat unchanged at 651. Let's start off with this Bloomberg piece on corn and soybean acreage. So Bloomberg reported yesterday that the push for green energy could cause soybeans to become America's number one crop. Demand for soybean oil, which is used in biofuel production, is on the rise thanks to President Joe Biden's decarbonization plan. The plan offers large subsidies for green, for green energy and is causing a rapid expansion of soybean crush facilities. More than 20 projects are underway in the U.S. to increase crush, which of course will require more soybean acres. Meanwhile, demand for corn is being threatened as more EVs take the road, resulting in a lower need for ethanol. American farmers have planted more soybeans than corn in only two of the last 100 years in 1983 and 2018. Okay, so I view this, this, this was in Bloomberg, which means everybody read it. Um, I think there are some flaws in the article or some, some things that were omitted, I guess. The first one would be the soybean export piece. So here's here's the acreage chart, which doesn't really do anything for me from Bloomberg. Here's the the export piece. So demand for U.S. soybeans or soybeans grown in the United States is largely twofold. Always has been. It's it's crush and exports. And because we're exporting so much less than we used to in regard to soybeans, we can afford to use a lot more domestically for crush. We can crush a lot more soybeans domestically as we have been for the last couple of years uh, because we're exporting less and this trend could continue. You could continue to crush more beans uh, domestically every single year for the next four or five years. And if the export piece continues to decline because uh, Brazil is exporting more, you could um, theoretically see, you know, you could see this big expansion in crush. You could see this big expansion in renewable diesel without really impacting soybean prices or without needing additional acreage. There had been talk at you know when this crush thing got going when it was all kind of planned that uh, we're going to need an additional five million acres of beans or 10 million acres of beans i just don't know that that's factual in nature right now given the uh, export dynamic which for the united states has not been very good uh, the other thing is that as of of this point there are only three states on the west coast uh where we're selling renewable diesel into i believe it's california washington and oregon so we're going to need to see an expansion of that um the third thing that they did not discuss here is saf so they talked about electric vehicles and how maybe we'll use less ethanol for uh for automobiles but they didn't talk about the saf piece which is a, another big big deal here so there's a lot of things going on here i feel like this um this article is it's there's a lot of good info in there, but it's stretching a little bit too. I think it's going to be a while till you see um, if if it ever happens in in the in coming years if uh, we see more soybean acres than corn. It's going to take a lot uh, to get to that point. I think. USDA will release its annual prospective plantings report this morning at 11 central time. Ahead of the report, traders estimate U.S. corn acreage at 91.8 million, down sharply from 94.6 million in 2023. U.S. soybean acreage is expected to rise sharply to 86.5 million from 83.6 million last year. Stocks of U.S. corn, soybeans, and wheat are expected to be larger compared to the same period last year. Big report today. This is the deal uh, today when it comes to price action and uh, great timing. Report comes out at 11. The markets close at 120, and then we've got a three-day weekend. So you've got two and a half hours to trade. One of the biggest USDA reports of the year. Uh, we discussed this We, we discussed this earlier in the week that um, USDA itself will admit that this report is, is one of their uh, – poor reports in terms of data and accuracy. There's not a real strong correlation between the numbers printed in March and the final numbers. Uh, they really don't start to get a feel for the acre situation until um, June. Somebody pointed this out to me yesterday, and I think that this is um, a good point, that during the survey period, which is the first two weeks of March, you were almost at a more neutral-ish level for um, the ratio. And again, I don't think farmers look at the ratio. I think farmers look more so at their microeconomic situation, what's profitable on their farm. So I don't know. I, corn acre should be down versus last year. Soybean acre should be up. You should see more corn than soybeans. What's the exact mix going to be? I don't know. That'll be the market mover today if there is one. 
Stock should be up across the board uh, sharply versus the same period last year, which is largely why prices are down. So if you guys have not checked out our premium content, you need to do so. Joe, can you tell me about your video with Brian Split yesterday? Brian did a fantastic job running charts yesterday. We had some uh, subscriber requests come in. People wanted to see the cattle charts, feeder cattle charts. A lot of questions about spring fuel needs. We also did cocoa because it's the hottest commodity out there. Uh, we took a look at that chart. We also did corn and soybeans. Talked about upside targets, downside targets, some big picture trend, trend type stuff. These chart videos with Brian are absolutely fantastic. Uh, following today's report, I will have a USDA snapshot video blast it out within 20 or 30 minutes of the release. And what I'll probably do today, I'm probably going to take the balance sheet in, in a spreadsheet form, throw it up on the screen, punch in the new acreage numbers, use the uh, Ag Outlook form balance sheets, and kind of tell you what the balance sheets for 24, 25 are going to, are going to look like uh, just initially. They're probably not going to look good. They're probably not going to look friendly, but um, that's what I will do at about 1120. That video will be blasted out. If you guys want to see the premium stuff, uh, make sure you're on the email list uh, today so you can see the USDA stuff. Go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up. This is a $50 per month subscription. Cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Uh, give that deal a shot this morning, guys. AgroConsult has increased its estimate for Brazil soybean production. The agribusiness consultancy is projecting that the crop will reach 156.5 million metric tons this season. During its crop tour, which began back in January, the consultancy forecasted the crop at 152.2 million metric tons. The rise in production is attributed to an increase in planted acres. Through the use of new methodology, <clears throat> AgriConsult is projecting Brazilian soybean acres to reach 114.6 million. The estimate is up almost 3 million acres from Conab's projection and up nearly 3.5 million acres from last season. Conab is, is, is estimating Brazil's soybean crop at 146.9 million metric tons, while the USDA has uh, pegged the crop at 155 million metric tons. So this estimate is above USDA's estimate and everybody thought USDA was too high. So if you punch this in and look at the chart, now you're talking um, a combined crop for Brazil and Argentina soybeans above 200 million metric tons, which eclipses uh, all previous records by a very wide margin. So that's uh, not a good look for the soybean market if it was real. Got a lot of different estimates out there. You got USDA at 155, you got this group at 156 and a half, you got CONAB well below 150. Where does it ultimately fall? I don't know, but it's uh, it's kind of an interesting take that it's it's more an acreage thing uh, than anything from this group. China may be manipulating its soybean import data. According to Chinese data, the country imported 96 million tons of soybeans from the U.S. and Brazil last year. Data from the U.S. and Brazil, however, show that China imported more than 101 million tons from the two nations. The USDA has actually quit using Chinese soybean trade data due to, due to the disparity in the figures. The accuracy of China's economic data has been an issue for some time, but lately concerns have increased as the nation struggles with numerous economic issues such as poor consumer confidence and a plunging real estate sector. I've been told my entire career to, that China's data, whether it's soybean data, economic data, that it's all bad, you know, uh, watch what they do, not what they say, that sort of thing. Uh, Reuters initially reported on this on March 14th and USDA acknowledged the change in their March WISD report. This is a fairly substantial change in methodology that they're kind of moving away from Chinese customs data and they're going to start using um, like exporter data essentially. So. I don't know, is China lying about their numbers in order to uh, buy food cheaper? Maybe, I don't know, but we know it's being shipped out of the US. I think the, the stuff coming out of Brazil in terms of shipments is pretty good. So is this like a, a needle mover in terms of the market? Probably not. Um, Bloomberg had a chart on this, which I really didn't like. This was kind of confusing, but um, in any case, they're talking like some higher imports, which is good overall, it's good overall. U.S. ethanol production increased slightly last week. Weekly output of 1.05 million barrels was up marginally on the week and up 5.7% versus the same week last year. Ethanol stocks were pegged at 26.1 million barrels. The print was up marginally compared to the previous week, but down slightly compared to the same week last year. Implied gasoline demand was down 1.1% compared to the previous week and down 2.7% versus the same week last year. On average, over the last four weeks, implied U.S. gasoline demand is down 1% versus the same period last year.
That's got to be a record production print seasonally or or pretty darn close to it at least. Uh, so production's really strong. Ethanol stocks are high, but they're supposed to be high this time of year. That's normal from a seasonal standpoint. You'll see ethanol stocks draw down. USDA, dep depending on how you want to slice the numbers, they may be forced to come up just a little bit with uh, their demand for corn via ethanol, but it's not going to be enough to really be a game changer at this point in time. Uh, cattle attempted a recovery yesterday. Uh, they sure did. Feeders closed an average of 91 cents higher. Live cattle closed an average of 27 cents higher. Box beef had a down day. Choice ended the day at 308.58. That was down 251. And Select ended the day at 298.43. That was down a buck 83. Outside markets on Thursday, U.S. dollars up just a little bit. Stocks are mixed. Uh, bonds about flat. Crude oil is up 78 cents at 82.13 in the May WTI. Remember, guys, report at 11 today. The markets are closed tomorrow, so we'll be off. Uh, we will talk to you guys on Monday. Happy Easter. Have a nice weekend.